Our next video on chord chord segments. Segment BC here on your screen is a chord. Segment AD is as well. <clears throat> and when they intersect, when they come together inside a circle, some pretty interesting theorems that we're going to talk about. Uh, this video is chord chord segments. The next one will be chord chord angles. The point of in intersection here is called point E. <coughs> and this little segment, segment BE, if you multiply this guy by segment EC, that's equal to the product of segment AE and segment ED, which is fairly interesting. And keep in mind that this point does not have to be in the center of the circle. It would work if it were in the center of the circle, but it doesn't have to be. It could be sort of off-center like it is here. So let's do a few examples. Number one, here we have chords that are intersecting, they're coming together at this point right here, this uh, this intersection point. And we have, let's see, 10 times 9 is equal to 15 times x. 10 times 9 is 90 is equal to 15x. So x is equal to 6. Alright, you can plug that back in there and check if you'd like to. Right here. 15 times 6 is 90, 10 times 9 is 90. Number 2, a little bit more complicated of an example. We're going to go 12 times the quantity of 2x plus 2. Notice we have to put that in parentheses. It might be a good idea to put them in parentheses first inside your picture to remind yourself anything that's greater than a monomial. I would put in parentheses. These two don't need parentheses. 2x times 15. So of course when you see a constant outside of a binomial you have to distribute. So we have 24x plus 24 is equal to 2 times 15 is 30 and then an x. Alright, so this is the bigger, when we have variables on both sides, I always say, alright, look which one, see which one is bigger. This one is, this one is definitely bigger. So I'm going to keep that one where it is. I'm going to move the smaller one over by doing its inverse. 30x minus 24x is 6x is equal to 24. We're going to divide, so we get x is 4. This one's probably a good idea to plug back in there. Plug it back in there to uh, check it. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 12 times 10 is 120. This way we have 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 15 is also 120. So that's a good thing. Both the products are the same. Number 3. Now we have a monomial times a binomial, so 10 times the quantity 2x plus 1 is equal to 14 times the quantity of x plus 5. Double distributive, 20x plus 10 is equal to 14x plus 70. We're going to move the smaller term over to the left. That will give us 6x, so do, do some subtraction there. We're going to subtract 10, and we're divide by 6. So x is 10, plug it back in. When we plug it back in here, we get 15. When we plug it back in right here, we get 21. And then just check them to make sure that 15 times 14 is equal to 10 times 21. And it turns out that it is. Number four. This is our last example. Here we have, let's see, 10 times 4 equal to binomial times binomial. When you have that, we have to put them both in parentheses and do a little distributive property, more commonly known as the FOIL method. First times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, last times last. So here we go, first times first is x squared, the outside terms negative x, the inside terms negative 4x, the last terms positive 4, over here is 40. 
So we're going to simplify the right hand side, that's minus 5x plus 4. Now when you have this, our job of course is to solve for x. So we need to get all the terms, gather all the terms on one side of the equal sign. So all I'm going to do is get 40 to the right hand side. We're going to subtract 40 from both sides. That leaves us with 0 and then minus 36. Now we're ready to use our factoring. Now since you're in geometry class you probably are really good at all this algebra stuff. If you're not, you need to go back and practice it. So here we go, x and x and 9 and 4 minus and plus. So let's see here, that brings us to our zero product property which means just branch these out and get two answers. Positive 9 and negative 4. Now a lot of times the negative value is not going to work. Sometimes it will depending on what the expression is. If there's like an x squared in here, it, it, the negatives will be fine, but <clears throat> it's a good idea to just go back and check to make sure both answers work. So let's check x equals 9 first. If x is 9, then this guy is 5. And this guy is 8. So 5 times 8 is 40. Does that equal 10 times 4? Yeah, that works. Alright, let's go back and check this one. I'll check this one in a little different color. So we're trying to check to make sure that none of our solutions are what we call extraneous. So here we go. Let's put negative 4 in here. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And right away that doesn't work. You can't have a negative value, a negative length for a segment. So that's not going to work. can't use that one. So our only answer is x equals 9. All right, so that's a quick video on chord chord segments. We'll move in and talk in our next video about this angle and how it relates to these arc measures out here.